in the workshop a Stuart 504 boiler part 5 making a multi-tap steam turret. I bought this 504 boiler via eBay for a couple of reasons. One is because I like 504 boilers and the other reason is I needed a quick and simple test boiler. One that I can use on the bench inside the workshop and just put it away when I'm not using it and because I fixed the spirit burner I'll be able to fire it using that rather than having to mess about with long pieces of pipe and gas bottles. In this episode I'm going to make a special turret. For test purposes I need this boiler to be able to supply steam for any type of steam engine from a 5A down to a small oscillator. So I'm going to make a special three-way turret. Here you get the idea. Three taps, one 3H by 32, the second one 5 16 by 32, and the third one a quarter by 40. And this three-tap turret will accommodate three pipe sizes, quarter, 3 16 and 5 32. In this video I'm making the tap part. There will be a base for it, but I'm going to do that in a separate video. Now I have a kit of parts, it's time to mark out the position for the valves on the piece of brass. I'm going to use some marking out blue, and this was kindly sent to me by a viewer called Norman. The idea of this stuff is you paint it on the metal parts, it dries very quickly, then you can scribe lines that you can actually see. This stuff really does dry quickly. I used to use an aerosol can of paint for this, but I much prefer marking out blue these days. I've turned over the part so you can actually see the marking out blue drying as the solvent evaporates. And in no time at all it's ready for use. First of all, using a small ruler I find the midway point. And then with my scriber I make a mark at this point. After that I turn the ruler round and scribe a line all the way across just to make it more visible. Then just to make sure I haven't made a mistake I measure it from each end. And as you can see the scribed line is now exactly in the centre of the piece of bar. Once again using a ruler I measure the width, it's half an inch. So at a quarter of an inch I make a mark and then I join up the dots. By scribing a line between the two points. After scribing a line between the two points the next part of the job is to measure and mark the positions for the two other valves. And this is where you have to be careful. Depending on the length of brass that you're using, you have to allow sufficient clearance between the valves to A, screw them in position, and B, make it so that the hand wheels do not interlock with each other. I do want the valves to be close to each other, that way the unit will be quite compact. The centre mark is obviously in the centre. The scribe lines for the other two valves are not equally spaced between the centre mark and the outer edges, they're just half an inch in. Finally, I'm making a mark on the end to show me where the centre is, although when I drill the end part, the hole will not be in the centre. I'll show you why later on in the video. Over now to the drilling machine, I will apologise in advance for it wobbling about, I really must bolt it to the floor. For now, I'll put my foot on the base to stabilise it. The usual process, first of all, drill the hole exactly on the mark using a centre drill. Centre drills are good because they do not wobble about. And also, in the early stages, if you do drill the hole slightly not in the right place, you can correct it with a centre drill. I've speeded up this very simple sequence to help prevent any viewers from slipping into a coma. Model engineering can be quite tedious, some of the jobs are very slow and can take quite a while to complete. Time for a top tip. What I'm doing here is setting the depth of the drill bit. I'm using the depth stop on the drilling machine itself, because as I drill the tapping size holes I do not want them to go all the way through. This twist drill is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And because of the depth stop, I can drill with confidence, knowing that it's not going to go all the way through. After drilling the hole to the required depth, it's time to thread it. This is a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap. And because brass is a soft metal, I'm going straight in with a plug tap. After setting the depth stop for this twist drill, which is tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, here I'm using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap to thread the hole. 
and once again I'm going straight in with the plug tap. This hole is slightly different, it's going to be threaded quarter by 40 because that's the thread of the tap. The steam tap I mean, not the tap that I'm now using to thread the hole. Quarter by 40 threads per inch threads are often used in miniature steam locomotives. Here's a very loose test fit with the steam taps to make sure they fit OK and clear each other. As you can see the hand wheels are quite close but there's sufficient clearance to turn them independently. I now need to drill a hole all the way through, not right out of the bottom of course, but going through all of the threaded holes to join them together. I haven't made a mistake, I am not drilling this hole right down the centre, because if I did that the drill would break through into the threaded parts and I don't want that to happen. This drill is tapping size for 2BA, which is 5 30 seconds of an inch. Here comes the drill bit through the second part. I had to adjust it though and move more of the drill bit out of the chuck to get it all the way down to drill through the third hole at the bottom. When you're drilling quite long holes with very small drills, take your time and clear the chips frequently. It would not be good if the twist drill snapped off in the hole. But it didn't and now I have a steam connection to every tap. Using the other type of tap, this is a 2BA spiral tap, I'm threading the hole. It's squeaking a bit, but it should be OK, I'm not putting too much pressure on it. Usually though, if you get this sound, use some tapping lubricant. All I need to do now is plug the hole that I've made in the end. That's why I threaded the hole. I'm using a pair of pliers and a spanner to really tighten a 2BA bolt into this hole. No Loctite 603 is required because I'm going to put some silver solder on the end of this part. I've machined off a double union so it looks like this. I've accurately positioned it on the brass bar and now it's time to silver solder it in place using my blowtorch. For this job I'm using Easy Flow number 2 flux and some Silver Flow 55 silver solder. I need to get this part up to red heat and at this stage, while the flux is bubbling, I'm really keeping my eye on the fitting to make sure it doesn't move out of place. When you're silver soldering, as the water boils off the flux, the parts, unless they're supported, may move out of alignment, but in this case I was lucky it went nowhere. When silver soldering, it's all down to the temperature and the cleanliness of the parts. When the component reaches the correct temperature, the flux starts to take on a watery appearance and that's the time to apply the silver solder. I'm applying it a little bit too early just for the video and watch what happens. A blob forms on the end of the silver solder and drops off. Before the silver solder even gets to the work, you have to apply the silver solder fairly quickly, only when it's at the right temperature. Wait for it, no, no, not yet. This can take a while depending on the size and mass of the component that you're soldering, and also the size of blowtorch nozzle that you're using. Really, for silver soldering this part, I should have used the next size up nozzle for the blowtorch. For the purposes of this tutorial video, I'm applying the silver solder fractionally too early. Can you see how it goes to a blob before it flashes around the joint? You have to be careful though, the metal needs to be just the right temperature. If you overheat the metal, particularly brass, it could melt. After silver soldering, just let the part cool slightly and then quench it in some water. Thermal shock will remove some of the silver solder flux residue, but not all of it. What I'm doing here is just cleaning it up on a piece of wetted dry sandpaper. This is going to go in the acid bath, so I don't really need to do that, but I thought I'll just have a look at the job. I also drilled a hole in the steam union that I've just silver soldered to the bar. But unfortunately, I forgot to press record on the camera, so I can't show you that. Here's the story so far. I have a pipe that goes from the tap on the boiler to the three-way steam turret. Here you get the general idea. With the help of a small cable tie and the usual silicone rubber tubing, I'm placing the component in the acid bath where I will leave it for 24 hours. Once again, this is a very weak acid. This part needs a base to support it. I'll make that in the next video and then test run the boiler with the new three-way steam turret. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.